what Trevor's mission was, was not to buy the drugs, but to get the guy to offer him drugs. He pushed the drugs on me, so I said, okay, you're sweet. And he went somewhere and he got the, the drugs. Why are you selling ganja here? Yeah? Okay, JP just radioed in now. I mean, so you get medical, medical backup, but I don't know what for. I don't know if it's been a robbery, somebody's injured. I got a call from JP to respond to the house. I don't know exactly what you're responding to. Come help me, the car's running and this oak's inside here. On approach, I saw three suspects run, run through the bush up, up the hill. see a lot of these guys have been warned by someone they're already starting to move off you can see these guys carrying timber here on the right hand side already um, it's always a case in, in operations where uh, suspects get warned of, of uh, what we're about to do and it actually messes up our, our whole day on approach I saw three suspects run run through the bush up, up the hill I jumped out of my car, went for one of the suspects. Man, I missed him by, by, by a it, 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 I really don't ever miss people, but on this occasion, I missed him. The wall there. But uh, let's go up, I can see the guys running there. I jumped in my car and gave chase. On giving chase, um, I saw the three suspects run, run into a shopping centre and they were both running down the corridor. All three of them were running down the corridor. Running into the toilet. I saw two of them go down the stairs and one of them tried to escape into the bathroom on the right. I'm giving you five seconds to come out here. I ran to, towards the bathrooms and I, I saw the other two guys were already gone. So I kind of cut my losses and gave chase into the bathroom. Five seconds, buddy. What? In this circumstance, I always searched the, the first the first room first, which was a ladies' room. And when I knocked on the door, a lady in the back went, somebody. So I was like, oh well, that's definitely not him. I made my way into the men's bathroom. Um, when I worked my way through, I saw that there was one door sealed. I, I kind of knew it had to be him inside there. There was no one else. Brother, I'm giving you two minutes. Don't be clever. When I looked over the store, he looked up at me and he, uh, he kind of 
pose for a second and then pull down his pants and sit on the toilet. Come. Come. I'm not going anywhere. Open. Young man, you've got two seconds to open here. I'll wait here the whole day. I said to him, brother, you can sit there the whole day, but you're going to jail. Listen, don't be clever. No, do not. That's fine. You stay here, because I'm going to wait. When you come out, I'm going to arrest you. Take all the time you want. Don't talk. You're wasting your own time. This guy thinks he's clever. You guys can know to do Is it possible to close here? There's a suspect inside here. He's locked himself in the toilet. Once I saw that the bathroom was actually quite sealed off, uh, basically one way in, one way out, it was just a men's and a woman's bathroom, um, I knew I had my guy. Do you, do you don't work for you? Yeah, can you let me show the security for the toilet? Yeah. The problem with this site was that um, it wasn't the site that I was protecting. So, you know, I didn't really have jurisdiction on, on what I was allowed to do. Uh, I couldn't just kick the door in. Uh, I didn't want to damage other clients' property. Um, I've got the suspects, one of the suspects locked down in the bathroom in the, in the shopping center. Please send uh, police back up as soon as possible. I need assistance. So what I did was I called the police. I waited for backup. I told the security that was on site to watch the guy. So that was just watch it. Airbox coming to, could you? You know, working with, with the SAPS is awesome. Uh, you know, um, when we call them and we get back up like that, then they're always willing to help us. And, you know, they, they know if we call and we need assistance and we, we tell them the location, we get assistance flipping quickly. No one it's came out. It's still inside. Yeah. yeah. The other security guards had managed to get some tools and open the actual door. And it's true as hell, there was a like sitting. Oh, we can't wait for you. Alright, let's go. Let's go, boss. Let's go. When I told this guy, come on, you know, stop wasting time, he, he, he just kind of stared at me. I said, take you off the toilet. I kind of told this guy, you're wasting your time. You know, you're sitting there pretending to take it. We all know you're not taking it. You might have been yourself, but you definitely weren't taking it. When we finally got him off the toilet and pulled his pants up, I just took him by, by his collar and his pants. Why you don't listen, eh? You don't listen. Hey, look at your Tommy's. It's really something when you arrest uh, these criminals and, and you, you put another one behind bars. We're going to question him and try and get information and try and make a rest on, on the other three. We're just visiting this abandoned house. Um, there's word of a lot of drug dealing and um, pretty much bad stuff going on inside, yeah? Uh, we're just going to go in and ask some questions. We're not going to arrest anybody. We're not going to hurt anybody. We're just going to ask some questions. Um, we think crime is emanating from here as well. So let's go in and see what we find. We got this area that we got a lot of security work in. And there's a few dilapidated buildings where people are too scared to live in. So it's overpopulated by vagrants just moving in, living there, no rent, nothing, because nobody's there to take ownership of the building. Yeah, obviously we're taking a risk going into this um, going into this den all by ourselves. 
but uh, you know we, we we backed ourselves. We had enough uh, we had enough firepower if we had to get out of a situation there. We wanted to understand who was living there and uh, what were they doing there. Uh, are there people with jobs? Don't they have jobs? Are they involved in crime? What is what is happening in this house? It's uh, it's an unhealthy unhealthy situation. Uh, we've, we have a lot of complexes in this area. The, we protect a lot of clients in this area, and uh, we feel that crime could be emanating from this abandoned house. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Hey, I want to just ask you some questions. How many people are living inside here? Yeah. As soon as we walked in there, we just got a bad feeling. It was very airy. Um, rats running around dark and dingy uh, every single room was locked up with a chain as to say that those guys are at work at the moment and uh, um, but however we found guys there who were not at work so we were trying to understand if they're not working what, what are they doing how are they surviving good how many guys are staying in this building yeah one fifty the guys that are living here. Well, question is, guys, JP had the one guy, the first guy we spotted. He was questioning him while I was busy with the other guy. When we asked them both who, how many people are staying there, I got an answer of 60 people from my guy, and JP got an answer of about five from his guy. So, so they, weren't, they weren't making sense. So I, I'm going to push on the side of 60 people because of the amount of rubbish and the movement through there it was busy. Okay, guys, I want to tell you. I'm just coming here to tell you. I don't want you that side by the complexes i don't want you making trouble that side i've got reports that the people that are stealing and the people they're selling the ganja they are living here yeah this is the reports i've got so i need you guys just to please stay out of trouble we kind of introduced them to the brand and said do, do you know night guard and uh, they do know us from the area it's my company night guard yeah we're here to help the people we don't want to fight but you have to help me. We don't want you that side in the complexes making trouble, okay? Yeah, yeah. You got it. Thanks, gents. Thanks for your cooperation. Thanks for your Shop. Shop. It places more fear into a would-be criminal when he sees that the security guards in the surrounding complexes actually have a team of hardcore guys backing them up. It kind of sends a message, don't come and play in our neck of the woods. So uh, it's imperative that uh, we show face and uh, we do these kind of missions all the time. Spreading the word like that is, makes the difference between us having to arrest these guys when they're breaking or them just changing their minds and not uh, committing crime at all. Zane and I were doing a routine patrol and uh, we came across one of our senior citizens. He's a local. This particular senior citizen uh, goes for long walks and uh, tends to forget the way home. So it's our duty to look after all the residents in, uh, in our area and uh, so we end up giving him a lift home. Hello, how are you? This is my brother. You've met him before as well. Hello. Uh, JP, nice to meet you. Let's go. Um, it gets quite confusing because there's a few different boomed areas. So once he walks out of the first boom and into the second boom or into the third boomed area, um, it does get a bit confusing and uh, he tends to get lost sometimes. And it's our job to pick him up and make sure he gets home safely. guy he introduces himself to us every single time so uh, we've we've met him a good few times and uh, uh, really got to know this guy yeah you know I love these big uh, indigenous trees in this area they're beautiful it feels good to help a senior citizen I sometimes think to myself uh, one, one day that's gonna be me getting lost in the street and uh, I would like to know that there's a bunch of decent citizens that, that are going to look after me.
sex. Look at me standing in a straight f***ing line. It's like dealing with kids. One of our uh, shopping centers have told us is that there's a guy selling drugs to the kids and to everyone that's walking past. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, we're doing a sting operation. Okay, first of all, Trevor's gonna be the the kid buying the, the dope. He's gonna go, he's gonna walk there to the side. The moment they see us around, the whole deal's off. So Trevor's gonna be walking, uh, walk there. He's gonna talk to the guy, the guy's gonna offer him whatever. As that happens, Zane, you're gonna be running in from the shopping center side, okay? That's why you, it's a vis today, you're gonna be hot running in from the shopping center side. <clears throat> Me and Mully are gonna be giving you support. We're gonna be in the black Jeep. We're gonna, as you guys arrest the guy, we're gonna ride on and give you support. We are not a task force that deals in the police's uh, portfolio of taking drug dealers and that off the street. However, the community expects us to take pride in our streets and to help them clean the streets up. Klaus, uh, you're gonna just show Trev, you're gonna just help, uh, put the cameras in the car. Trevor's gonna be using another private vehicle. You're gonna put the camera in there, position the camera so that we can get some good footage of the guy and uh, what he's selling and what he's doing. Um, yeah, it should be nice and easy. Bearing in mind, there's the whole taxi association there. Just now we get into, you know, we don't know who's yeah. who in the zoo that now people can get upset that you're arresting this guy. Uh, it can turn into a big fight. These small time dope dealers, although they might seem harmless to the rest of the community, we have schools just a few blocks away and uh, we have word of uh, kids buying drugs from these guys. So we can't afford to leave them on the street. We have to get rid of them. Okay guys, the objective is to go in there hard. We are arresting anybody who's selling drugs there. Uh, we don't really give a about the weed smokers, but they're selling drugs to kids. So we got to get these off the street, okay? 100%. Cool. So they put me undercover there, made me the bait. So what I had to do is approach this guy and then wait for him to push the drugs on me. Once I've taken the drugs and then we we're gonna uh, cuff him, throw him in the back of the car and take him to the police station. Okay, so you're gonna be carrying it in with you and then uh, you mic'd up so that uh, they can't see the mic. Yeah, shit, that looks legit bro. Nice, Klaus. Treat. So Klaus put a hidden camera into a, a takeaway packet, which I carried and I used to form the whole scene. Okay, um, just keep your eyes front. Just use your peripheral vision. Don't look like the electric dogs. You guys with the camera, with the cameras can look any way they like because those back windows are tinted real dark. Um, as I turn right onto Leslie, they're gonna be on that side there where the taxis are. So let's just have a look. See where they're standing today, who's who in the zoo. There's two places they can be standing. As you turn right and we pass the garage, Mm -hmm. um, you'll see the taxi standing there. They can either be standing there, there'll be two guys, or as we pass the sh entrance to the shopping center on our right, yeah. you'll see there's a palisade fence by rocks. Behind that, they normally sit there and also some of them gamble and stuff. So that's where we'll be just seeing where they're standing and how we can set up the operation today. Someone passed me to five rand as well. I'm gonna ask for this draw as well first, and then I'm gonna ask you have anything else. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy sitting there's right one there. There's sitting there with that uh, handicap cap. Yeah. So let's try past and just confirm. Check in. Yeah, that's our guy. That's him. That's one drug dealer. What Trevor's mission was, was not to buy the drugs, but to get the guy to offer him drugs. Um, I was, we were undercover at the petrol pump, busy putting in gas. Zane was uh, hiding in one of the other retail stores around the corner. And uh, the goal was, as soon as this guy produced the drugs, Zane would uh, charge him and uh, tackle him, Zane the train style. And we would come in from the petrol station where we were putting in gas. So I walked up to the guy and I asked him for 
uh, loose cigarette just so I can gain his confidence and everything like that. So I asked him for a loose draw. I even did a little bit of bargaining with him. I asked him for two for five rand, <laughs> when it was supposed to be six rand, so I got one rand discount. Awesome, eh? You have done it up. He pushed the drugs on me, so I said, okay, you're sweet. He went, uh, he, he said, wait here, wait here. He went to the, uh, walked away. I didn't really watch him. I was busy, too busy watching the friends. But he went somewhere and he got the, the drugs. Guy went to a nearby dustbin, picked up the product, brought the product through. As soon as JP and uh, Mully pulled up, the guy tried to take the drugs from me quickly, but I, w I wasn't letting go, because he's like, oh, those are the cops, oh, those are the cops, and he tried to take them from me. Why are you sending Kanji, yeah? Let's go, let's go. Let's go, we're going to we swooped in. He looks at you. What was on yet? For some reason, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Okay. And we move. We searched, we found more drugs, we found quite a lot of marijuana. No, stand it. Put your hands there. Where's that packet? Guys, come stand. Where's that packet that man was carrying? Say, we've got the Dhaka from that he sold to him. No, I understand it. But he had a packet. I want all of it. We then transported him to the local police station. Uh, where we handed him and his drugs over. It's not a massive amount of marijuana. Um, I doubt whether he'll be doing any time, but we plan on doing these such cleanups all the time. And we just want these guys off of our street corners and we want our kids safe. Welcome to today's training course. We are here with SLA, our medical service provider. Um, they're going to go through a refresher course of CPR with us. We're meeting with uh, our medical partners, uh, SLA, for CPR training session. I know that all of you know what you're doing, but from time to time we all get a little rusty, so please pay careful attention. Uh, over to you. Good. go? It's very important for all team members to refresh themselves. Very often we're the first uh, people on the scene and uh, could be the, dif the, be the difference of saving someone's life or losing somebody. Um, it's also great to get together with our partners uh, in, uh, when we're on the street together. Um, we're all working together with the paramedics and all the other emergency service providers. So it's great team building as well. But more importantly, we're there to save lives. All right, are we going to start with a demonstration on, on the adults for one of you guys? Basically, very important to notice the stance. You want to be down on your knees. You want to keep your back aligned, keep your arms straight and locked. You're going to, if you have a look at what he's doing, you're going to interlock your fingers. You want to, you want to compress that chest at a compression rate of 100 compressions per, per minute, allowing for decent recoil. Important to remember, always count out loud, count to 30, give two breaths. Uh, it's not so hard as it looks, uh, but you have to do that and make sure that uh, you do the technique right. You've got to pull the head back okay. like that. It opens the airway here. Okay. Otherwise, the airway will be blocked. Keep your arm locked in the elbow. You just shoot a little bit. You don't want to push the baby's chest out his back. He's a lot smaller than the, than the adult. Is it a nice and steady push? 
you know, it's uh, very important to know a little bit of CPR and first aid. You never know when it could save your buddy's life or, you know, someone in the office or even your partner. Um, you know, you get onto a scene and there's no one that can help. Uh, it's, uh, it's first response. Um, obviously, we don't want it to be like a, a thing that they think they're doing the first aid. It's just until the paramedics get there. Well, the, the importance of CPR is, is basically what we're doing is we're massaging the heart muscle to keep the oxygen and blood circulating through the body so we can get a spontaneous heart rate back. Yes, Davey, eh? you're doing it like you mean it. You haven't got action in a while. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when you and Trev roll together, bro. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, bless you. She's a lead. <laughs> bless you. I'm looking at phone call. Two, three, four, two five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello? Nice right, breathing, guys. Nice breathing. Yeah, okay, five cycles. Let's go. In the middle of training session, uh, Muli has to go and respond for the alarm activation. Okay, next one, I'm on the way. Same, yeah. Yeah, I'll see you now. I was gonna, gonna get a few foxy potatoes. You, you got a call and then you have to go. Okay, I've just received a call from control just to give some backup with the response vehicle. We've got a panic call in one of our areas, and we know usually at this time, it's usually the guys lifting the gates off the rails and, and ransacking the house. So we're just gonna respond to see if maybe we can make a rest. So, Harvey, what's going on there? Uh, just come to check the number. What's wrong with it? Everything's fine. Did you speak to people? There are no one there inside. So, let's go look. Uh, the response responded to the house. He said that there's nothing going on there. But I'm just going to go check it out and jump over the wall and actually see what's going on. Push their spikes down, I don't know why. Yeah, I think they are the, uh, the next to it. When they put the fence? Yeah. Come on. Based on reaction officers, when there's nobody home and they've checked the property, they issue the area with a slip. We're here at the premises, there's nobody here. Everything looks okay, the electric fence is still on, the dog is here, so there's nobody in the premises. Did we contact the client? Okay, we found the problem is he's got paradox outside beams which are probably sensitive and our hardy dog sets those beams off. So that's where we're receiving the burglary signal from. Right, we responded to the house that had a burglary signal. We got to the property, Salby was already on site. We, we checked around, it was a false alarm because it, the guys got outside beams. And the outside beams are prone for hardy dogs because their wingspan spreads over a meter, setting off the outside beams. So everything was all in order, everything's okay. Now we're rushing back to get some more medical training. We're on our way to a complex where two of the ground staff have failed the polygraph tests as well as all evidence is pointing towards them so we're going in and we're going to pick them up with the help of the SAPS and we're going to take them into the police station and question them further um, where um, well, we'll try to take finger we'll take fingerprints and then with the fingerprints we'll just match up the fingerprints and from there we will uh, see if they were in fact in those two units on this on this particular day jp phoned me for backup to assist him in this in a case that was happening with a few burglaries at the at this complex where everything was pointing back at this gardener and cleaner they've both hopelessly failed the lie detector test it happened while the residents were the residents were not in they were on holiday um, items were taken uh, the sliding doors then were moved closed only people that we could suspect that could be involved in the crime is the security, the garden staff, the cleaning staff. Because they will know who's on holiday, who's not there, and to be able to break in. And they know how to lift up the sliding door without breaking anything. Okay? We polygraphed six guards, they came out clean. We polygraphed the five cleaning and gardening staff, two of them came out dirty. We need to take those two in for questioning and fingerprinting. Um, perhaps we could solve those two cases. 
Uh, sometimes we call in the help of a polygraph specialist. His job is to ascertain whether or not a person is lying. So, for instance, there was one or two thefts at uh, a particular estate and uh, we decided that due to the nature of the, the way it was done and the fact that the two parties were away at the time, it could only have been from inside information. The reason why we put in our guys on lie detector tests or people around is just to clear people because people like to always point fingers at security first. Oh no, it's the security, before they look at their own domestic workers or the people that actually work inside the complex. So that's why we actually play open call to the people and say, okay, you think it's our God? Let's put them on a lie detector test. And our guards are always flying through the lie detector tests. Me and JP responded with the cops to the first complex. We managed to get the, the cleaner. Then we, we were made aware that the gardener was actually working at another complex up the road. I jumped in the car with my estate manager. We shot off to the other complex. When we got to the clubhouse and we actually got to speak into the guy to apprehend him, I told him to pack his things and let's go. He basically took it as a joke and he just he carried on cleaning the clubhouse. He's involved in the floor. Yeah. Samuel, leave the floor, please. This is more important. You're wasting my time now. I managed to get the guy into the car. We took him through to the other complex where we got the cleaner lady and we managed, we put them together and the cops took them for questioning. Behind me, the staff members are getting questioned as to who knows uh, what occurred. Um, they will be taken through to the station shortly. Okay, so it's up to you. I'm helping you, man. In the first place, man. So far. It's expired, yeah? It's original from Mozambique, you understand? It's expired. He's aware of this. What we have to ascertain is that if these people were, in fact, responsible, so we can fingerprint, we'll, they will be fingerprinted and we will try and look for evidence linking them to any of the crime. Um, unfortunately for them, in their case, they're going down either way. Both of them are illegal immigrants and their papers have expired two years ago. So um, they've only got two tickets out of here. The one is to jail and the other one is back. Uh, the other one is deportation. So the, those two people are still in custody and we just hope to get closure on this case. We got a phony client that says her husband's at home sounds strange on the phone. We've sent the paramedics there already, so we're responding as well. We had a phone-in client um, ask us just to pay a visit to her house. She wasn't there at the time. She's worried about her husband. He's not, uh, he sounded depressed on the phone and he's not taking her calls now. She was very stressed out and worried about her husband who um, happened to be saying some disturbing things on the telephone. Okay, JP just radioed in now for me to get medical medical backup, but I don't know what for. I don't know if it's been a robbery, somebody's injured. I got a call from JP to respond to the house. I don't know exactly what we're responding to him, but I was a few minutes behind JP, then suddenly I got a call from JP saying I must phone, phone the medics. 
Enemies over here. I tried the intercom, um, there was no answer. The gardener, obviously, he heard the intercom inside, so he came to the gate. Inside the garage? Yes, the garage. Yeah. Open quickly, open quickly. Yeah. I asked him, where's the husband? Uh, where's his employer? And uh, he said, no, this guy's in the garage. Hello? The, the car's running. What do you come help me at? Look, we kind of had an idea of what we might be dealing with. So the control room dispatched the medical unit as well as the tactical unit. Come help me at the car's running on this is right here. I kind of knew what I was dealing with here. Um, I knew it wasn't a burglary or a robbery or that. I always proceed with caution, but I kind of knew what I was expecting. As we opened that garage, we knew the guy was gassing himself. It was the fumes uh, from the exhaust pipe. It was all in us choking. I would have, if we were in there any longer, we would have passed out. <coughs> The car was running, the fumes were thick in there. I could hardly breathe. <laughs> when JP laid him on the ground, I checked for his pulse. He's got a pulse. To be honest, when I felt his pulse, it was so slight, I thought that, that was tickets for him. No, he's got a pulse. <laughs> This guy's gassed himself in his car. He's got a pulse. It's a faint pulse, sir. We stood back and let the paramedics take over. Does anybody know what's happened yet? Apart from uh, what you told me now about the gassing. Uh, uh, got a was, call. Was the vehicle on when you guys got here? Yeah. The vehicle was still on. Was there was it? a hose pipe inside the exhaust yeah, right. and stuck into the back window. Um, the Michael Children got a call from his wife uh, saying that she's worried about this guy. Chiefs, the paramedics were there in quick. They got there, they put the heart monitors on him, they checked his pulse, they stabilized him, they put him on oxygen there. Okay, you continue ventilating, I'm just gonna fetch a stretcher. Okay. They assured us that the vitals were there when they uh, when they stabilised the patient. Okay, let's just put the tent on the bed. Okay, two and ten. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three, left. Okay. Okay. That's quite scary because I'm used to dealing with gunshots, not people trying to kill themselves. I mean, when the paramedics got there, they were so calm. It was like nothing actually really happened. But I mean, that's their job, and that's how they've got to deal with the situation. Yeah, I'll pick up. I'll grab that. Okay, you ready? One, okay. two, three, left. Dealing with your own life and uh, your own pressures, especially in our industry, where we're dealing with uh, horrible crime every single day of our lives, uh, we understand the toll that pressure can take and uh, how fragile the human mind is. Just lift this. Okay. What's that one, sir? Yeah. For us, it was quite a, quite a thing to see, you know and we're just glad we could stop this guy um, before we had the chance to to end it all you know there's there's always a solution out when the ambulance left the reality actually kicked in what what was going on it kicked me it came down hard on me the husband was in the car he was trying to commit suicide he's in the ambulance now on his way to four now. Um, I'd rather text me the lady's number, let me tell her that he's okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> it's just sad that somebody can let themselves get so depressed. What's your lunch, bro? Huh? Are you coughing like this? Huh? I don't know, I think it's, uh, I think I'm fine. I just think it's, uh, it's a really way to go.